All right, folks, back again. Hope you uh, have had a good week since the last time I saw you. Uh, finally got some time to sit down and do some more of these studies for you on the new Zondervan Thompson Chain Reference Bible. Our last video, we ended with um, the different abbreviations page and just the intro pages here. Now we're going to get into kind of uh, the actual meat of some of the things that I've got going on here. Uh, this video is going to be about... Uh, probably two to three sections long and hopefully it won't be as long as the last one but we're going to get right into this I've set some things up in the camera that hopefully now that I'm kind of used to it it will uh, it'll be all right so hopefully this will work so what we got here like I said on the last one we left off with talking about how the river of um, inspiration is left out a lot of these illustrations are left out we talked about that it's not here, but we did say about the book intros here, they are at the beginning of each book. So if I go through the tabs here, you'll be able to see the thumb index that each book is, is included at the beginning. Uh, the intro is, is included at the beginning of each book. Now I like that feature. That's a good thing to have. Uh, usually in the Thompson chain is in the back. And what I'm gonna do is kind of compare the uh, book intro layouts and things like that and see what maybe the difference are with these. So if we're in Genesis, let's go to the Genesis book intros back here. And where I will find that is I will go to the A to Z index and flip back a page. We talked about this last week. And we'll find out here uh, what's going on with this. We have, let's see here, where would the book intros be? Analysis of the books of the Bible. It's probably those right there. So that's uh, 1596 is the page number. Back here, these are actual page numbers, not Thompson Chain reference numbers. So I'm going to go to 1596. And excuse my sniffling. It's been a cold day, so it's been, uh, my nose is running pretty bad today. So here we have the books of the Bible. And this is in the back of the original Thompson Chain. This is, once again, this is the new one by Tom Zondervan. This is the comfort print edition. Okay, so we have uh, the book of, of Genesis, Moses, commonly accepted. The same thing here. We got the date written. This is uh, the date written here. Um, here we have the, the book's origins, main theme. It didn't have the date written on this that I can find. It might somewhere else, but there's also an intro page here that is not listed here, but it may be on the front, some of the things we went over last week. Uh, the purpose is the book of origins. That's what this says here. This is the record of the origin or our universe. Universe, human race, sin, redemption, human race, sin, redemption, family life, family life, corruption, society, nations, uh, different languages, Hebrew race, etc. Early chapter of this book have been continually, same thing, but the facts, okay, it is not the purpose, chosen family, okay, same exact thing here. Uh, to whom written, the main theme here is humanity, sin. Um, it says humanity here, and it says man here. Once again, I told you last week they changed some of these words, I guess, to in, be inclusive, even though it's talking about man and mankind. We talk about humanity here. They try to update it, I guess, if you want to call it that. Uh, to whom written, it doesn't say here uh, what, what it's written to, but this says to the people of Israel. Okay, so we have a key word, beginning, key verse, first messianic, pro uh, messianic prophet, uh, promise, synopsis. We got 1.1.2. Story of primeval humanity, story of primeval man. Once again, they uh, change that. No use to do that, no reason to do that, but they change it anyway. Um, the events, the rainbow, the chosen family history, career of Abraham, okay, career of Isaac, career of Jacob. For one, for some reason, they've got these. These is, are one, two, and three. They've changed these to A, B, and C, and they've kind of reversed that. No biggie there. We have some, the career of Jacob, some references here. They're also listed here. Um, but I will tell you the number is different. This is 4291, and this is 4288. Um, I think I hinted at this on the last book, and that is the fact that after so many pages, after so many numbers in the end of the, cycle, the text cyclopedia, the numbers don't add up. They don't line up because they've changed a lot of the things in there. So once we get to that far, uh, hopefully we can kind of elaborate on that, but the numbers aren't lining up starting, you know, around the 4,000 numbers. So we have a career of Esau, career of Joseph, prominent names, who's a prominent people, 
Uh, so she had to get her Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Esau and Jacob, five great spiritual leaders or characters, same thing here. Uh, the lesson of the ages right here. The Bible opens with mankind ruin, paradise loss, revelation, and that's how that ends. Now here we have major chains, so this is something new. Different major chains in Genesis. That's pretty good. We got creator, creator of man, should be man. Divine image, temptation, sin's origin, murder, deluge, all these different things. That's a pretty cool little addition there. That's a that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, looks like they probably, I would think they would do that with all of them too. So if I go back to another tab here, major chains in Deuteronomy. So that's that's a, a neat addition that they have there. Um, the one thing I did like too is they've kept some of the main themes. So if I go to Leviticus or Exodus, for example, uh, let's see here. They do have this little thing here that's highlighted. It's uh, very interesting, some of the things you can find in just the books of the Bible. Now, this is one of them that I found that uh, is nice little, you know, maybe even a study. The Pilgrim of Israel, a type of the Christian life, and they've included that here. So that's good that they've included that. For the most part, it looks like they've included the same thing there in the books. Okay, layout's a little different. Uh, this is kind of a little bit more, I don't know, it's, it, they run on together, and there's nothing that really separates it. I like that these are, you know, separated. Beginning of the book is a really good feature. I will uh, give them credit for that. That's one of the very few things I'll give them credit for, though. Uh, on to the next thing. We're going to text formatting. So if I go back to Genesis, since it's relatively easy to get to in both Bibles, we'll go to Genesis here, Genesis here. If we go back to that, let's go ahead and turn the page. Let's look at the formatting. Um, and I talked about this last time. The topic numbers and the divisions here, the different uh, topics and divisions are in red. We really went over that last time, so I'm not going to harp on it here, but I think this should have been gray because uh, the red always references in the Bible, it always references the uh, words of Jesus and the inspired words of Jesus. So these references are not inspired. These subdivisions are not inspired. These are things that man added later on. So I think that they should be in gray uh, at the very least So because there's a lot of red text, I mean, everywhere. When you get to the New Testament, it's just like the whole New Testament bleeds because it's so much red, and it's it's really not necessary uh, to do that. Let's see here. I've got in my notes no chapter intro or overview text. Okay, here's one of the big things that I think they've left out. I don't know why, but they have. And if you'll notice here, we have chapter 1, and then right underneath it, we have some divisions of uh, the different parts of the chapter. Okay. So, and these are different than these. I mean, it's kind of kind of the same, but it's different. For example, here, the creation of heaven and earth, verse 3, the light, verse 6, of the firmament, verse 9, the earth separated from the waters, verse 11, made fruitful, creation of the sun, moon, and stars, uh, verse 20, the fish and the fowl, verse 24, and on and on and on. And it goes all the way like this through the end of the, of the uh, chapter. And it does that for all of these chapters. So you get an overview of what's in the chapter just by reading what's underneath the chapter title here. You don't get that with this. They have took that out and probably because they've got these different separations. Now I'm a fan of separations like that where you can see it. I like being able to do that and it's easy to find what's going on that way. Um, but I don't know, something about the Thompson chain I like better and that's having this concisely here. Now these chapter things are included. I don't know why they didn't do it in the Old Testament, but they are included in the New Testament of the original Thompson chain. If you'll go to just anywhere in the Thompson chain, these bold sections here are an example of some of the different divisions in the Thompson chain. Okay, so instead of it being right above, it's right over here to the side of the margin. That doesn't bother me a bit. It gets out of the way of the Bible text. It's out of the way of the biblical text, okay? That's a good thing because then I can just focus on this. If I don't want to see what's on this side, I can kind of use blinders and just kind of go down the text and just read the text. There's nothing to get in the way of that, okay? That's one thing I wanted to point out. These are not in the new uh, Zondervan things. Another thing that's uh, not there, really, is we have some top margin topics here, which I really enjoy. We have the first Sabbath that tells you what is on this page. And the serpent deceiveth Eve, it tells you what's on this page. Usually it's directly uh, over the side of. So the first Sabbath would be this side because it's on the right side of the page. So you'd find that here. First Sabbath is right here. And the serpent deceiveth Eve, 
that would be on this side of the page. And we find it here. The serpent deceiveth Eve. Okay, so that corresponds to that side of the page. Okay, so on this we have the Garden of Eden. We have man to care for the garden, Cain and Abel. Abel murdered, Lamech's descendants. And it looks like they do that all the way through. So I'm not sure if uh, when I wrote this down that I was going to say that, uh, that they were different or that they're the same or that they've included that. I'm not sure, but it looks like they have. So that's that's uh, decent of them to do that. It may have say, say a few different things. Like if I was to go to chapter uh, 11 here, it would probably say different uh, divisions because based on the formatting, the page pages would be different. Uh, they'd be laid out different. So they wouldn't exactly be the same thing on this side and that side. So we have the generations of Noah. It's chapter 10. If I go to chapter 10, we have uh, Canaan cursed, building of the Babel, confusion of the tongues, Shem's line to Abraham. Okay. Uh, Terah's family, God renews his covenant. So Babel's not there, but it's right here. So I don't know. It's not really a big deal there that that is different. Um, to me, I don't know. It seems like these on the original is a little bit more more of the highlights that you would want to see versus uh, Shem's line to Abram. I don't really see that as being a main point versus these are a little bit more to the point. These are a little bit better, I think, done. Um, let's see. And I mentioned also that the chapter divisions in the new edition are a plus, plus chapter divisions. I'm thinking that that's talking about, let's see, chapter divisions. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that's talking about these. They're divided into the different topics, which, I mean, that's good. That's good to be able to have that so you can see what those topics are. Uh, like, I still I still say that they should have included this. I don't know why they took that out, but that's, uh, I don't know, that's maybe neither here nor there. The KJV Study Bible, I'm not sure. I don't have that down here. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that this is a different font than the KJV Study Bible. Um, the new one, anyway. Uh, this, is, this is completely... To me, I've, this is the first time I've seen this font, and it looks, um, it looks. I mean, it's easy to read and everything. This is more of a Baskerville, I think, font, something like that. Well, maybe not Baskerville. Uh, I used to know fonts like the back of my hand. It starts with an M. I knew something, but I can't remember what it is. But this is uh, a completely new font created for uh, this Bible and some of the other Bibles. And it also says something in the front we talked about last week about Thomas Nelson typeface. And I think that may be the one that's in the New King or the uh, King James uh, Study Bible Second Edition. It reads very well. And if I can think of it, maybe next time I'm down here, I can compare that and I'll uh, grab that as well. And I mentioned this last time. You see these uh, triangles, okay? Uh, the triangle means it's the, it's the beginning of a chain. So if we're in the beginning of Genesis and close to the beginning, oh, you're going to see a lot of triangles here. The square, there's a square. And it means the end of the chain. And that doesn't necessarily mean that book. It can continue on multiple books, and it would be the end of the chain. So if I just bounce forward a little bit, we probably find some squares here somewhere. There's a square. So that's the end of Butler's. That's the end of the chain in the Nehemiah. So to me, those are clunky. I mean, look at how many triangles you got over here to the side. There's an unnecessary. Like I said, when you're looking at the beginning of a chain, that's fine and hunky-dory, but the minute you turn to the next part, uh, you turn to the next reference, then the triangle's gone. So no triangles here. Why? Because we've already seen them previously. And so to have one for the beginning and then have a square for the end, that's kind of redundant to me because when you get here, you're going to have to go to the next, to the very end of the chain in the back here to be able to even see what the uh, first one was anyway. So they're kind of redundant. You don't really need those, I don't think. Okay, so we also have something else that... Uh, it was mentioned, I think, in the front. Uh, paragraphs. So if I go down here, for example, I'm in Genesis 19. We have a paragraph symbol here. Paragraph symbol here. Paragraph symbol here. That's universal. I mean, everybody knows what a paragraph symbol is. Most people do. And that just means a new paragraph's beginning. We're beginning a new thought. Here's a different thought. Here's a different thought. And that's how you read it. Their paragraph symbol is missing. It's not here. What they've done to replace that is a bold red letter. Okay? And this is slightly bigger than the font uh, of the regular letters in black. That one's slightly bigger than that one. This just means these are a new paragraph, okay? So if I go to, I'm in Genesis 19 here. 
If I go back uh, one or two pages, we find Genesis 19. Okay, let's go to 4, 4, new paragraph. Let's go to 12, 12, new paragraph. Let's go to 15, 15, new paragraph. Not, and as we see here, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a new uh, topic. Okay, so this one started a new topic, Lot and his family flee. This one started a new topic, the evil men of Sodom. But this one is not starting a new topic. It's pretty much the same thing. So their paragraphs are bold red letters. 23, 23, new paragraph. 29, new paragraph. 30, new paragraph. Okay, so that's how they've outlined their paragraph changes. I'm not a big fan of that because, once again, that's just another red letter and it's bold and it looks different. That doesn't, that's not something that's very easily noticed uh, that that is a uh, completely new paragraph. So that's kind of my opinion on that. Um, now I'm not sure why here we don't have a new paragraph here at all, but it does list it here. Two and three are new paragraphs. I don't know why they would have done that, but anyway, that's just their new paragraph symbol. Okay. So just wanted to point that out. Oh, okay, so that's the other thing. At the beginning of each book, we have this, okay? At the beginning of each book, we have these little notes at the very top left. No matter which book you're in, I can go to the Old Testament, I can go to the New Testament. Always have the top left hand side. And what that shows is, let me go back here to Genesis here, where this begins. This is not here. It's not up here, okay? Um, these are just where the topics start. This is a totally different thing. For one thing, you're going to have the character, in this case, the author, which is Moses. He's commonly accepted as the author. So we have references to Moses. So if we want to learn more about Moses, we can go to this. Same thing with Exodus. Probably going to show us Moses and Exodus as well. So those numbers are 2420 and 4307. 2420, 4307, Moses. Okay, the other thing is the analysis of the book. Well, we don't necessarily need that with this one because now they have that at the front. And that's what that reference is to, is the analysis of the book. So um, this right here is the analysis of the book, okay? So it's out of the way, but you can easily find it. If you want to find it, it's right here. I didn't, have to, I didn't even have to go back to the uh, chain index page and flip backwards to find that. I could have just went here. I, I hardly ever use this, so I forgot it was there. The other thing that this has, um, keywords. What's the key word? Right there, beginning. I would have had to go in the front of this to find it somewhere. There's a keyword right there, and it's kind of hard to find it in all this, but it has it for me right here. The keyword's beginning, the keyword in Exodus is deliverance, the key thought anyway. Uh, if I go to Isaiah, it doesn't have one there. Some of them do, some of them don't. Jeremiah doesn't have one. Ezekiel, analysis. But then again, it may not have it in the analysis. So sometimes that happens. It's not in the analysis, so they're not going to have it up here. It's usually just pulling back from the analysis up here. So this one's very interesting. This one's not even bolded. So that's pretty neat. I've never noticed that before. Uh, let's see, Second, First Corinthians. The writer's Paul, the analysis of the book. Chap main themes, chapter 1 through 11, salvation by faith, Christian duties, chapters 12 through 16. You're not going to find at the beginning of these, those um, those little top left margin notes here. Okay, So that's missing in the new ones. And if we compare, this says compare all references. So basically just going down here and kind of looking to see if these are the same references. I'm pretty sure I did on the last video, so I'm not going to fool that right now. I think I got ahead of myself on the last video, to be honest with you. So uh, if I was comparing verses here, I went all the way down and then kind of did the same thing here and see what the, the, uh, see what the comparison was. So for example, if I go here to verse 5, uh, we have some parallel passages in verse 6. We have Job, Psalms, Psalms, Jeremiah, Job, Psalms, Psalms, Jeremiah. Okay, so we kind of did that in the last video, I'm pretty sure. Okay, another thing we talked about is... The glossary is missing, all right? The glossary is missing. So if we go here to verse 11, we have the word after. If we go to here to verse 11, we don't have a definition. So they haven't defined it, nor have they given you a glossary for you to define it yourself. So after is pretty common, but it may mean something different here, the way they use it. 
So if we go to the glossary, which is you tab over in the original version, you tab to the concordance and you start working your way backwards. This is the glossary. So if I go to the word after here, according to the direction and influence of, as live after the flesh, or to note, denote an aim or goal. So here it says, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding after his kind, uh, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. So after his kind, the word after means uh, according to the direction and influence of. Uh, so according to the fruit tree yielding after a fruit tree, not a fruit tree yielding after uh, a vegetable plant or something else. It's always yielding after its kind. So that's that was a, uh, just an example there. They don't have a glossary and they don't really define words in the margin. So if I go to just flipped over here to uh, Genesis 30 and 38, you'll see that there's two words here and they don't define either one of them. 30, 38. Okay, and he set the rods which he had peeled, P-I-L-L-E-D, before the flocks. Okay, and if we go to 36, and he set three days' journey betwixt himself. Okay, what if you didn't know what betwixt? Obviously, we know between. Same thing, but what does peeled mean? Well, they don't define it there. Uh, now, this doesn't define it, but it gives you the reference to the concord, I mean, the uh, glossary, which is always in the old original Thompson Chain is always 4452. That's a number you need to have memorized. When you go to 4452, it always means the glossary, okay? So the word peeled, P-I-L-L-E-D, what does that mean? He set the rods which he had peeled. It means to peel or strip the bark off of. I mean, that might have been something else. You might not have known that, but it's nice to have that feature here, and they completely removed it from this new Thompson Chain. And I was talking about the updated topics. I think I just happened to come across this I wanted to mention. If you go to number 17 or 1672, I think I may have mentioned this the last one too. I don't remember. Sounds familiar. 1672. Pleasant Sunday afternoons. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we went over this, but it won't take long to go ahead and say this again. 1672 in this Bible calls it family Bible readings. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But it's easy when you see that to say, okay, maybe they're leaning towards the Seventh-day Adventists because they believe that uh, you should worship the Lord on the Sabbath day, which is uh, Saturday. Well, Jesus said that uh, God made Sabbath for man and not the other way around. So what's wrong with Sunday afternoons? Why would you want to update that? Oh, let's just change that to Family Bible Readings. Well, if something seemingly so small offends you, what else offends you in here that you're going to change, you know? It just doesn't make sense to me why you would change something like that. It does not make sense whatsoever. Okay, so that's the um, other two sections that I wanted to go over on this video. And it looks like uh, we went through quite a bit of this. So I'm just going to continue on. Um, now we're going to talk about between the Testaments. So if I go to the middle of the Testaments here, what do we have? Okay, now I think... Where did that list that at? It was this. This was the page. The very beginning, it says, chart showing the contrast between the Old and New Testament. It also has that in here. So if we go to page 1012 in this Bible, uh, the easiest way probably is just go to Matthew and come back. We have between the Testaments, okay? Contrast between the Old and New Testament. And we have here... We go to the same thing, Matthew, and turn backwards. We have contrast between the Old and New Testaments. Once again, we have a different cover page. So this one improved numerical sentence chain references, together with first chapter analysis, many other original and practical helps. The words of the Lord Jesus Christ in red, with all the words recorded therein as having been spoken by our Lord, printed in red. Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the New Testament of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Kirk Bride because that's who uh, published these. Nothing really different here. Uh, I, once again, I'm pretty sure I went over this in the last video, so I apologize if some of this is repetitive. Uh, like I said, I think I got ahead of myself on the last one. But between the Testaments here, we have this chart of um, these two books, the Old Testament, the New Testament. And we have Christ in between. He links the two together. There's no reference of that linking it here. I just prefer this nice 
these illustrations and how much better they look they're more engaging and they just i mean they just look a whole lot better um than just a simple chart like this this has no life about it this is just there's no creativity about it let's just put this on a page and hope it makes sense look at all this extra space they have they could have filled it up a little bit bigger but maybe that's just maybe that's just quirky that's just how i am but like i said there's a link here and here the link is not shown it just says christ well why is christ there doesn't make sense unless you can actually see that he is the link between the old and the new testament okay um, I have a reference here to see point number three in video number one. So whatever in the chapters, I should have it marked. Point number three talks about the, the uh, between the testaments page. Okay, so they also have here in my notes to compare the Matthew intro to the original book intro. So there may be something different here. If I go back to Matthew, once again, we'll use this analysis of the books at 4262. We'll just go backwards here and find that. Matthew, the original book intro here. Let's see what we got. Gospel of Matthew. The author, Matthew, also called Levi. And called by Jesus. Despised class. To whom addressed. Primary to the Jews. There's a date written here. Purpose, according to this. Um, to show that Jesus of Nazareth was kingly Messiah of the Jewish prophecy. Apparent purpose to show that Jesus and Nazareth were the kingly Messiah of the Jewish prophecy. We have some keywords here. The keywords are down here. We also have to whom written, primarily the Jews. Distinctive features. That's right here. And the analysis. Let's see. We have analysis here. Story of the kingly Messiah. Stamp on the kingship of Christ. So this is talking about the synopsis here. And the distinctive features in different chapters. Different chapters here. Peter walking on the sea, for example. Chapter 28. Bribing of the soldiers. The earthquake, the Great Commission. Miracles found only in Matthew. Parables found only in Matthew. Analysis, which is here, the synopsis. And then prominent people. I don't see prominent people here. It just goes to uh, major themes in Matthew. So I think that was just to compare a New Testament book with uh, a New Testament book in here. Okay, so that's the Between the Testaments, all right? Now, let's go to what I would consider to be the main meat I will end this video with that. So, the Helps tab. We have the Helps tab here, okay? Uh, the Comprehensive Bible Helps page is repeated as in the original. So, if I go here, Comprehensive Bible Helps, and I go here back here to, to mine, uh, the AZ Index for this one. It's repeated here. And by repeated, I mean this was at the front of, of the Bible too. And this is also at the front of this Bible, uh, as I've showed you in, in uh, video one right here. Okay, same thing. Um, so it's uh, repeated as in the original, but the new is still weaker. Look at this. You got just these things, and then here you got all this other stuff kind of divided, subdivided, plus the things that they leave out, like um, the different charts on the, uh, let's see. Um, Historical Bridge, the seven editions of the Divine Law, Books of the Apocrypha, that's nowhere in here. All these other things, golden chapters from the Bible, I don't think that's in there. Bible marking tips, I don't think that's in here. Okay, so you're not going to see a, a lot of that either. As we go on, we're probably going to go page by page, I think, in the, in the next video or so to do that. We talked about in the very beginning of this where it talks about the different numerical and alphabetical pages. So I've got a reference here to page 3. See, in the new edition, well, no, see, oh, not three, page eight. I didn't see the V there. So here it talks about the two indexes are renamed to better reflect the function. So we have um, the alphabetical index and the content cyclopedia of topics and texts is now called the numerical index. So back here it used to be called the condensed cyclopedia of topics and texts. So if I go to the chain index here, the condensed cyclopedia of topics and text is now in the new one called the numerical edition. Okay, numerical index, numerical index. We have alphabetical at the beginning of this and then numerical. Okay, so that's the difference. Um, some of that stuff is, is different. The principles and best, best, uh, best practices, best study pages are in the same location. So if we go back here once again to the HEPS page, 
if I, if I go over here, we have Principles of Bible Study, Principles of Bible Study by the author, which is Frank Charles Thompson. Okay, we have the Spiritual Attitude, Conscious Need, First Hand Knowledge Best, Study the Bible as a Traveler, Seek to Understand the Deep Things, Best, method, best Methods of Study, um, Topical, Biographical, Book Study, Study the Books, Study of the Chapters and Important Passages, Memorize Some Great Verses, this is not showing the chapters and important passages for some reason. Familiarize a student with gems of scripture. See the golden chapters. That may be why, because the golden chapters is not in this one. Yeah, I don't know why they took that out, but the study of chapters and important passages is no longer there. If we continue on, I want to show you in this here, Comprehensive Bible Helps, the Helps tab. We have no cover page in the new edition. It just goes straight from Revelation, from Revelation straight into this. There's no cover page, and here's one of the reasons why I believe. First, you got the Text Cyclopedia, which is what I just told you about in, in the new one, the numerical Text Cyclopedia. Second is by, uh, special is Bible readings. That's not in here. There's a, another section, and we're going to get onto that probably in the next video. Uh, special Bible readings. There's some outline studies of the Bible, studies of prominent characters, Bible harmony il illustrated studies. Archaeological supplement, that's not in here because they don't have an archaeological supplement. Uh, seventh Concordance, Eighth Color Bible Atlas. So there's a few things missing here, uh, as we talked about in the last one. That Bible readings is an important one. I'll show you. They've included it, kind of, but it's very subtle, all right? And uh, God is definitely not subtle. Who do, we, who do we know in the Bible that's subtle? Well, the serpent was the subtle beast, most subtle of all, all the other animals, okay? So the overview of the AZ index, let's look at that next and we'll compare some topics. Okay, so if we're going down here and comparing some of these topics, we have Aaron, Abiram, Abasement, Abednego, Abel, Abithar, Abiding in Christ, Abigail, Abihu, Abijah, Abijam, Ability, Divine According to, Abimelech, Abinadab, Abiram, Abishai, Abulution, Cleanliness. Now, here's one of the things that are, are coming in. Uh, there are no explanations anywhere that I found of what these little arrows mean. Okay? They're nowhere to be found. I can't find it anywhere. It's not in the beginning. It's not in anywhere that I could find uh, of what these mean. When I compare that to the original edition, it says here, see cleanliness. Okay? Or see good and evil, see adjacent, see torment. And that's what it's referring to here. Abolution. Well, see cleanliness. It's reading you, it's telling you to go to cleanliness. I guess that arrow means go to or see. Accumulation. So we have, let's find that. Accumulation of wealth. Um, let's see accumulation even here. It is accumulation of wealth. Okay. I don't know why it says the arrow is here. There's nothing to see. Obviously, you're going to go to 2811. That doesn't make sense. Accursed C903, C903. Down here, we have activity, evil, and religious. Evil and religious. Okay, adamant, flint, C flint. So they're adding that. That's not in this original one. C tact, advent. This says C second coming. This doesn't say C second coming, even though it's the same thing. But there's no understanding of what that means unless you have the original version to, to know what it means. And that means just basically see this other uh, topic there. That's the only way you can find it out in, is in the original Thompson Chain Reference Bible. Okay. A couple more things here. One or more thing looks like, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, just uh, another thing I was going to say here is accomplices in the new edition right here. We have in the original... Let's see, accomplices is, okay, I think I know what I was going to say. Accomplices is 822, okay? 822 in the original Thompson chain, I think this is what I was going for in my notes. 822 is connivance. I don't know where they're getting accomplices at. So if I go to 822 here, what does it show me? 822. Conspiracy, connivance. So why does it say accomplices? That doesn't make sense. This says connivance. Well, this says cons conspiracy. This says see conspiracy. 
So conspiracy in Thompson Chain. Look, conspiracy, 2780. Conspiracy or connivance. Okay, so they're just, I don't know what they're trying to do there. Why don't they just call it connivance? Conspiracy plotting, but there's nothing about accomplices here. It doesn't make sense. So that's just another thing, some of the changes that are list, listed here. And what we're going to do, I think I should have at least maybe two more videos of this, but I'm going to go ahead and stop for now. I think this has been informative. I hope it's, I hope it's not been too repetitive. What we're going to get into in the next is all about the meat of everything in the back that is missing. Okay, there's tons of stuff missing. All right, and we're going to get into a lot of that as we go on. This may be the end, the end, uh, end of the Bible too. I'm not sure exactly. I've got, I've got. It. it sounds like it may be the video after that. I don't know, but either way, we're going to get into a lot of different things here, and we are going to uh, blast this thing wide open to give you some more reasons why you probably do not want to purchase the new one if you're a, a diehard fan and you appreciate all the work and everything that's been put into the Thompson Chain Original Edition Bible, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, and always remember to keep being a steward of the Word.